All right, today we're going to talk about Betaflight's RC interpolation versus RC smoothing. Okay, as of Betaflight 3.4, there's a new RC input smoothing option, which is called RC smoothing. Uh, the pool request is linked here, and the code location for both interpolation and smoothing is here as well. We are going to be looking at some debug modes in the data that you're going to see, so I'll try to point those out. And here are what the debug modes are for the different debug lines. So debug zero is raw, unsmooth RC data, so on and so forth, and you can see down through here. To set debug modes, you go to the CLI in Betaflight, type get debug. And then you can see here RC interpolation as a debug mode. There's RC smoothing now as well, and RC smoothing rate. Okay, let's first talk about the classic interpolation method. So in Betaflight, interpolation has always been on. It's, by, it's on auto by default. And what auto does, it takes the stepped input of your RC receiver and it smooths it out. How it's doing that is it just interpolating and going from the lagging point of each stepped command and you can see smoothing that out with my RC command here from Blackbox. One advantage of it, it's a pretty simple calculation to do that and there's no pumping effect. I'm defining that word so I'll talk about it in a minute. The disadvantage is though it's delayed by one frame rate so whenever you're you know adjusting your stick inputs what the flight controller is actually seeing is always delayed by one frame rate. Now in the cases of a crossfire in low latency mode, that's 6 milliseconds. I think it's 6.67 milliseconds. But in other transmitters, it can be up as high as 22 milliseconds. So it's a, you know, it's a delay component. With smoothing, there's always going to be delay. And for interpolation, that's its delay. Other disadvantages is that it does not handle drop frames very well and has the main disadvantage is it has abrupt changes in the slope of the RC command so you can see that right here. The abrupt changes will essentially play havoc with any feed forward or D term. You can see here the abrupt change is a causing the D term to jerk and for and in this example this should really just be a nice smooth transition in your D term for driving the PID sum and it shouldn't have this sudden jerk up and then back down that's induced by simply your RC interpolation or the amount of smoothing you have on that. If we pop over to Betaflight, you can see built into the GUI, it says RC interpolation is set to auto. Now, a lot of times, you know, you can set that to manual and adjust these numbers. So let's look, what does that do? In this example, frames are coming in every 22 milliseconds. If we adjusted and manually lowered the RC interpolation to 15 milliseconds, you can see what it does here is it actually, you know, will have the interpolation come up and hit every 15 milliseconds, and then it's just going to flatline, come up and hit again. What that does is causes excessive D term noise and spikes. As you can see here, this should really just be a nice smooth transition up and down, and it's all kinds of spiky back and forth. And then again, that is directly reflected into your motors. And if your motors, you know, you're really trying to have them jerk left and, you know, you know, speed up and slow down. It's really like just pumping your throttle. And if you ever were taking your quad and just put it in the air in a nice hover and just pump your throttle back and forth real fast, you're going to see that your motors get warm pretty quick. So that's what that induces. That's going to induce heat. So RC smoothing is new in Betaflight 3.4. To turn it on, we're going to have to go to the CLI, and we're going to type get smooth. And you'll see the command right here, RC smoothing type, the default is interpolation. I'm going to go ahead and hit copy, type set, paste that, backspace this, and type filter. The defaults for the cutoffs for smoothing input and derivative are both zero, which means automatic, so it's auto detect. If you're plugged into your computer, and your flight controller powers your receiver or you be careful and plug in a LiPo to power your receiver, turn your transmitter on, you can run a command called RC smoothing info. And you can see here that it will detect what your smoothing type is and also 
what your detected RX frame rate is. So in this example it's 22 milliseconds. You can also see what it's going to set the cutoffs for which is 20, mils, or 20 hertz and 20 hertz for both. And we'll come back to that. Remember those two numbers. So with RC smoothing, some of the advantages is you can see there's a little less latency. So instead of it being lagged out one complete frame rate, in this example, instead of 22 milliseconds, it's around 14 milliseconds. So there's a little bit reduction in latency there. The, uh, that's for the ascending leg. The descending leg does have a little bit more latency. That's kind of when you're turning the stick back to zero in any case. Another primary advantage is smoothed edges and there's no juts, abrupt changes in the edge. And it's hard to see here, but these are slightly rounded off you know, wherever it's trying to change deflection. And just that ever so slight rounding makes a big difference in how your D-term and any feed forward things like D-term set point weight or throttle boost. RC smoothing is less affected by loop time jitter. So it's, that's a calculation thing. Chalk that onto the list, but don't worry about it too much and it handles packet loss a little better and that's important because as you're flying out farther and your RSSI starts to go down that means you're starting to have packet loss and how RC smoothing is handling it versus RC interpolation is important. Disadvantages again is that uh, receding leg has a little bit more latency. So I wanted to pop into an example of how RC interpolation is handling packet loss. So in this sample you can see we have and this is the debug mode RC interpolation. Never mind what the debug items say. This is 0, 1, 2, 3. Uh, it, it gets jumbled. The, you can see here the RC uh, frames coming in stepped. And you can see there's some packet loss here. When this, is, when this line here is nice and steady chevrons, that means there's no packet loss. And in here, there's some packet loss all through this section. So in this spot specifically we're doing a, a left hand roll with some packet loss and you can see how that's jerking a D term so if I turn on Expo and what you normally see by default in black box you can really see how that D term is just jerking all around here and you can see how the motors are just all over the place and that's primarily because of the packet loss here uh, specifically here and then here again if I turn Expo back off so I can see how the RC commands are lining up with the uh, stepped input by the receiver, you can see if I can, you know, hover over here, use my hold down my Alt key and use my arrows to get right on top of that here, then hit M for measure, and then slide over again, holding my Alt key down. You can see at 22 milliseconds, it's looking for the next, you know, where should it be? Well, it can only have this red line to follow, so it touches right on the red line. Well, it's going to go out to 22 milliseconds again, and it's going to ask, you know, try to figure out where it needs to be. And again, that red line is there. So it, you can see that it flat lines out and then jerks down again. So these, again, are abrupt changes, um, which are, are not good for the D-term. The higher you have D-term set point weight, the more effect you're going to see because of this. And then same thing for throttle boost, uh, if it's on throttle inputs, obviously. Um, throttle boost isn't going to affect your roll or pitch commands, which is, we're looking at a roll command here. Okay, so RC smoothing to get the cutoffs for the low pass filters, it is using this equation, which is the frame rate in hertz divided by 2 times 90. To convert your milliseconds into hertz, take 1 over, in this, in our example, 0.022 would give you 45 hertz, and then you go down to this equation, 45.5 divided by 2 times 90% gives you 20 hertz. So using your RC smoothing info command in Betaflight, you, you probably want to check that, especially if you're seeing pumping like this. If you're seeing pumping, those cutoffs are not low enough and the auto calculation is not working correctly. This can be an issue for certain transmitters or in certain receivers because the transmitted frame rate that it's telling Betaflight is actually incorrect. So for more information on those topics, please do visit the wiki. The link will be in the video description and just browse down. This is the tuning tips for Betaflight 3.4 and do check out these two posts. And finally, I'll just drop some links in this and I'll make this slide available link below so you can have, I guess, some different links to the different pull requests. Just a little side tip with the new method of having Black Box Explorer installed with an executable versus a Chrome app. 
What's really nice is you can right click on a black box log and hit choose default program and then pick black box explorer here and you just hit always open and then from that point forward then you can just click the log and it will open black box explorer and open the log right off the bat. Do note in Betaflight black box explorer it seems like there's a bug where the RC input is not lining up with the RC command so for the plots I was showing you I'm actually using an old version uh, clean flight black box explorer and if you wanted that uh, to look at your logs just let me know I'll make that available for download as well so if I go to the same spot in the same log you can see in the beta flight black box explorer and this could be fixed by the time you're watching this but if you're seeing it not line up that could be why uh, whereas in the clean flight one I'm using it lines up appropriately uh, the other thing with lining things up is you have to have expo turned off so that's expo on expo is off obviously here and then again you have to make sure expo is off but again it still doesn't line up here yet okay that's it drop your questions below having smooth rc commands going into your flight controller to drive the rest of everything else is pretty important uh, the new rc smoothing uh, is definitely a step in the right direction uh, just for the fact that it smooths off those sharp edges. Thanks again, and hope this helped.